Hello and welcome to this Jane's Weather update. It is Friday the 25th of October and we've got a bit of a situation as usual on our hands today. We had a lot of showers and thunderstorms hitting southeast Queensland and northeast New South Wales. All of that has now moved off the coast and is no longer a concern in that area. In the southeast, we've got a bit of a cold outbreak. If you're in the southeast today, you will be feeling it this morning. We'll talk about why that is and when it is moving on and what to expect next week. Otherwise, a bit of activity here in the northwest but no real connection down into the south at the moment. Let's have a look at just how cold it is. Here is Mount Bore Bore this morning covered in a fresh layer of snow so yes we are looking at that. We will move into this one here to have a look at that in detail. So here are the maps that are in development but coming soon so this is a sneak peek. I've shown snow level thickness and what these lines here indicate is how warm or cold the air is and these ones the purple lines that's 600 meters 500 meters that's how low the snow could fall in Tasmania overnight into the morning so that's just how cold it is here it is 1500 meters in Victoria which is why Mount Bobo is now covered in snow so that is a bit of a sneak peek on what is coming so let's have a look at recent rainfall so for the week uh, up until yesterday we had all of this moving across the southeast it finally finally rained inland parts of the southeast however was one little spot here that did miss out. So lots of really, really good falls in through here, but still some that are missing out. But generally, overall, it is looking much better than what it was. Let's have a look at where we are now. So in terms of the pressure map currently, here is the trough that brought these showers and thunderstorms to southeast Queensland, northeast New South Wales, now moving offshore. Still just a little activity here this afternoon. The cold front that is responsible for the chill across the southeast is now moving away. High pressure is moving in. So that one is going to come across the southeast during the day. Here's our next system. We've got a trough over in the west. There's a cold front down in through here. And that's essentially our situation. We're going to have lots of troughs that are setting up here, not every day, but some days will be more active than others. High pressure next week. This is likely to sit over the bite and be kind of stagnant there for several days in a row, producing colder air on this side and then warmer air on this side. We'll see more on that in a sec. Let's have a look at the next eight days overall. This does include some of the activity this morning because it's from 1 a.m. So the remains of those showers and thunderstorms as they move through and the new systems that have come in. Across the southeast, it's really only sitting the south, hitting the south here, the west coast drying up as it crosses the ranges, drying up as it crosses the ranges. Activity up to the north, a connection down into the south, but not really making it into the southeast as it comes across, not really making it into the southwest either in the next eight days. So this one is coming down here and then fizzing out. So that is not going to help us in terms of rainfall. Uh, having a look at day by day at what we're expecting. So let's move out to this one here. So here we have, this is Friday. So this is the 24 hours, essentially midnight through to midnight for Friday. The activity that we have there, southeast Queensland, northeast New South Wales, we've seen the trough has moved off the coast here, but there is just a little bit more to come for those parts in there. Here is that connection down into the south that isn't really doing much yet. The cold outbreak into the southeast, all those showers moving away. Let's head into Saturday. So very weak activity in through here. It's just coastal showers. Nothing heavy, not the showers and storms that we have had. This one, the connection down into the south is moving in. There's another cold front that's coming up through here. So that is Saturday. Have a look at Sunday and it fizzes. So it had all of that action here and then it breaks up as it moves across the southeast. Tasmania will get it because there's a cold front that comes with it, but it won't really move anywhere north of the ranges if you're in Victoria and South Australia. It's the western parts that get it. There is Saturday and there is Sunday. It is not the southeastern area missing out once again. Here we are on Sunday, the next system sort of developing in there, and then Monday is when it really kicks off. This one's more inland as well. So the trough is running down in through here, less for northeastern New South Wales, particularly central New South Wales, more just onshore uh, coastal activity there, but this one for the big widespread showers and thunderstorms. Next one starting to move down the coast. This is on Monday. Moving into Tuesday, not much happening in the southeast. This here, you can almost 
You can always see it. The winds are moving in this direction around in through here because we've got a large high pressure system that is sitting in the middle. We will have pressure maps on these soon, so it'll make more sense soon. But not a lot here, just some cold air. Here is the trough that's running in here, showers and storms. Next one coming down. Moving into Wednesday, there it is. It misses the southwest. Not much happening in the southeast. Onshore airflow, bit of activity in through here. Into Thursday, more activity here, just coming into the south, not crossing the ranges. This one fizzing out. And then into Friday, gone, lots more activity in through here. It's a coastal thing, a western thing rather than moving inland. Okay, so that's the week ahead. Let's have a look at what that means overall as a pattern. So this is from the Euro model. And you'll notice here, this is our precipitation, how much above or below average the potential for the rain is next week. And we are missing out on a whole lot in through this part here. This strip across Queensland into northeast New South Wales, that is where we saw that activity day after day. We've got a trough that sets up here and delivers good things. It might extend further inland than what this is showing but generally this is all of a dry trend thanks to our high pressure system that is sitting in the middle here pushing these winds in here but no connection to tropical moisture it tries to come down into the southwest and it doesn't really go anywhere it peters out before it comes across that is the precipitation part of the equation here is the hot or cold so how much warmer or cooler than average it is and again you can really see that high pressure system in action there it is winds traveling this direction around a high so that is cold air that is extending right up into the south into the eastern states and plus our trough that produces showers and storms so a cooling effect in through there it picks up warmth as it moves across and the heat comes down into the southwest we're going to have this day after day next week here in the southeast you'll be potentially glad it isn't cup week that's the following week because we've got a bit of a chill on our hands day after day after day whereas the warmth extends down here all right let's move into week two so that took us through the 4th of november let's move across here we are in week two let's have a look at this one first in terms of the temperature the heat moves across so that means for week two which is the 4th of november to the 11th we may have more warmer than average weather than cooler than average weather over on the other side though there is something that is hitting the southwest here and bringing in cooler than average weather so a bit of a change as we move into week two looking at that in terms of rainfall potential not a lot in through here something is trying to come across but not really delivering you would think and then here is the thing that is coming up into the southwest so that is that sort of second week of november as we go into that we're looking at just in terms of this temperature first of all next week cold hot the week after, hot, cold. So quite a change as we move through. Let's have a look at the MJO. Again, what is this? If you watch every week, I'm sure you're very good at this by now, but it's a pulse of tropical energy. Why do we care? It moves around the globe whenever that's in the Australian area. Yay, we get that connection to tropical moisture. And if it can run into low pressure, it turns into better wet weather. We like it when it's in the green zone, which is what it is now. But looking where we're heading from here, there's a big area of brow to get through, which is those two first weeks of November there, which is why we saw the rain come into the west, start to come down and then just fizzle out. So there's no strong push of it as we go through the next couple of weeks. We've had that now. We've seen the falls move through, that rain that came across the southeast and then all of those showers and storms as they hit. Now we're moving away and we're going to move into a suppressed activity zone. And that's for the first part of November. November. It might come back around the middle. Cool. Let's have a look at sea surface temperature anomaly. Anomaly, meaning how much warmer or cooler than average it is. I'll let you know this box here has dramatically the blues in it have dissipated as the week has gone on. That was quite strong. We have all of that red in through there, and all that red off the coast here. We had a lot of strong blues are in the western part of that box. The blue has weakened over the last couple of days. Having a look at the Pacific Ocean one, here we have lots of strong blues and that has actually increased over the past couple of days as well. This one is getting stronger, this one is getting weaker. However, lots and lots of warm water off the northwest coast, across the top and off Queensland. So no matter what the Pacific and Indian Oceans are doing overall, we have our own moisture source here. We also still have a fair bit of warm water that's in the Tasman Sea there. Yes, there are some bits of blue, but overall that is warmer than average and another source of moisture. Moisture running into low pressure produces our rainfall. If we don't have that moisture, 
And it doesn't matter how many wet weather systems you have come through, they're not going to deliver as much if they don't have that moisture source. This is telling us that we have a great moisture source around Australia. We just need it to meet up with low pressure in your particular spot to get that wet weather. But overall, looks like the Indian Ocean Dipole is weakening, whereas the Pacific is increasing. Let's have a look at that in action. So here is the Pacific here. We have, there was a little bit of a, an increase here, but now we're going back down again. And here is the modeling. One, two, going across the Australian threshold to go into La Nina. One, two, three, sitting near that threshold. The American threshold is up in through here. So that is another three models that the Americans will say are crossing that threshold. The Australians know. We have two models here that are sitting on the fence. They're nowhere up near here. They're all on this side of that fence. We know, we can see it. We've got all of that blue that's out through there. We've got all of this here. That indicates the Pacific will be trying to encourage that moisture to come to us. We need to have the low pressure to turn into wet weather, but we've got part one of the wet weather equation ticked. All right, let's have a look at the Indian Ocean. So that one did a massive thing here, which was when it was incredibly blue over here, incredibly uh, red in through here. That is now weakening off. This one is last Monday when it was red. So I would expect what these models are suggesting, this one will bump up as we go into next week. So now we're in there and it's about to bump up. Also coming to the very end of the season where this graph matters. I will actually stop showing this graph to you because the monsoon takes over and this becomes much less relevant. As we look into next year, it is looking like being fairly neutral. And they're all saying the similar thing there. We don't have some models up in through here, some models down through there. It's a consensus, which we like. It's a consensus of just average. Okay, let's have a look, a whip around the country at some conditions that are happening. So we go through each of these things here. We go to Brisbane right around over to Perth, and then you can sort of get a gauge of what's happening in this particular area. So Brisbane all has cleared. We've got sunshine. It's about 30 during the afternoon. Wind southwesterly heading southeasterly as we go into the afternoon. So a lovely day in store for Brisbane. Moving into Saturday, let's unpack this, looking at the pro toggle. Nothing here is heavy. Nothing here is stormy. So this is just our onshore airflow producing showers running through there. More of a hindrance than anything that can help because it's just, you know, one after the other after the other, they don't add up to much. And it reduces the temperature about 25. Heading into Sunday, similar sort of thing, but there's more consensus across the models here. 60, 80%, so that's our top level there. So that's all of the models suggesting wet weather at that time. We like to see all of that doing something very similar because it gives us higher confidence that that particular thing is likely to occur. Again, a bit of a moderate day, so about 26, but you see most of that is in the morning into the early afternoon. Let's head into Monday. That's when the next trough comes across. These numbers, numbers jump up. So does this one here up to 15 millimetres. And we get storm icons back in the forecast. Trough is there. We've got the moisture. Showers and storms are likely during the day on Monday. Okay, that is what we have for Brisbane. Let's have a look at Sydney. Today we'll unpack this. We're sitting on about 20. We had the sunshine during the morning. Winds are westerly. A quick turn here pretty much at lunchtime and it goes into a south to southeasterly. That'll bring on some nuisancey showers, particularly near the coast uh, with this one here. So there's no there's no strong push to bring that in. There's no connection to tropical moisture. This is just the cold outbreak that moved across the southeast, the energy from that making its way up the coast and bringing a bit of a chilly afternoon to Sydney. Heading into Saturday, yeah, that's a top of about 18. So we've got our southerly winds. It'll be feeling chilly. So 17, feeling like 12. Lovely. There's no cloud at all with this one. It's a southerly wind. There's no wet weather, but we will feel a bit of a chill in the air and a cold start too. Heading into Sunday, temperatures rise back up. There's a little bit of moderate to high cloud overhead. Winds are turning north and then northeasterly. There's no wet weather with this one, so Sunday is great. Monday up to 27. Here we are, westerly, northerly, and then there is the next change about midday on Monday. So temperatures start to come down and there is a chance of showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon before more wet weather comes in on Tuesday. Let's head into Melbourne. You'll see 15 or maybe 16 here. Here this afternoon. Let's unpack this. We've got all of the showers that are moving through this morning, but in the afternoon, the sun properly comes out 
and the chilly in the air is slightly reduced but yes no only 15 or 16 this afternoon it's been a very chilly morning uh, with lots of showers moving through cold start on saturday morning have a look at this one two three models have it down here this one here is the australian model it's the yellow one they don't like the cold they never like the cold it's always these ones that go down and this one that doesn't so we can meet somewhere in the middle there this model is suggesting four in the city yes frost in the outer suburbs and generally across victoria but it may not quite get this cold in the city. I'm going with about five at the moment. We'll see what I say on air tonight. All right, and then it turns into a lovely day. Barely a cloud in the sky. We've got light winds and it'll warm up for the afternoon. So Saturday, cold start, yes, lovely day ahead. Moving into Sunday, there is a change coming through. Temperatures rise up. It's not as cold to start because we've got a cloud over there from that system coming through. There's likely to be just a light spit of rain. That's all it is with this uh, next front that comes across. Temperatures do reduce during the afternoon, but it's not a dramatic change. It's not like when we went from 31 down to 16 the other day in just an hour or two. So it's not dramatic, but there is a dip in the temperature as the afternoon goes on on Sunday. Now that will lead us into what I'm going to call a bit of a murky week. High pressure system sitting over the bite. That means we're in a southerly. So day after day after day, temperatures will be below average. There'll be a southerly wind. There's not going to be a lot in terms of wet weather, but it's just going to be <laughs> it's going to be murky. It's going to be black. It's going to be um, just the odd shower coming through, increasing at the end of the week as we go Thursday into Friday, when it'll also really chill off and we'll have another cold outbreak. All right, let's head over to Adelaide. How much of an impact are they seeing? We've got that high pressure system moving through. So today, here we are on the mild side, sitting about 20. Um, with Adelaide, most of the modelling, so if you think about the global weather models, they, they have a grid over the area. Think about Adelaide, there's an ocean right there. There are ranges right there. It's this very skinny bit in the middle. So some of these can be influenced by the maritime environment or they can be influenced by the ranges and not really see the true extent of what happens in that spot of Adelaide. So our AI forecasting knows that it's actually warmer than what all of these suggest. So this is a great example of a spot where the AI forecast does a lot better than what the global models do. All right, so here we are about 20 in the afternoon. There's a little bit of cloud hanging around. Saturday, temperatures jump up. The high is out to the east. So there we are about 26, 27. We do have a bit of cloud, but there's no real wet weather. Heading into, where are we, Sunday? Here we go. Bit of a cool start. We've got a lovely afternoon, but winds do turn southwesterly. And into Monday, back down to 22, thanks to that change that came through. So if you're looking for wet weather in Adelaide, there is not a lot in on the horizon. We've got that high pressure in the area. Heading across to the west, here we have in Perth, 24, 23, 27, and then 32, and then 36, and then 34. Here is that run of heat that the Euro model is picking up for next week. High pressure system sitting over the bite cold through the eastern states, warming up as it heads across the top, northerly winds into Perth. So there's no wet weather at all with that. There is sunshine pretty much every single day. And from Sunday, it starts to rise up, but it's from Monday that we really do see that heat in through there. As always, head to janesweather.com. Here is an exciting thing. If you have our app, we do have a dark mode that is nearly finished development. And hopefully I have some uh, news on that one about when that is released next week. I'll see you next Friday.